how to make sure you don't get ripped off on big purchases that require a loan. Estimating your monthly payment the old-fashioned way, pencil and paper and a calculator. All right, so here are some things that you uh, need to uh, make sure you have. Um, paper, pencil, and scientific calculator. If you don't have a scientific calculator, make sure that you have a calculator nearby uh, with exponents. Um, otherwise, you could be doing a lot of extra work. Try to make sure we're being as efficient as possible. Um, so the first thing I want to look at before we start getting into the formula is the order of operations. This is going to come into play. Um, uh, the thing we use at our school, or I teach my students all the time, is this PEMDAS. Uh, parentheses are first, exponents are second, multiplication and division is third. Notice I said those at the same time. You just do those left to right. And then the addition and subtraction is four. It's only four steps. Even though there's six letters, only four steps. Um, now let's look over at the uh, formula. All right, this is the monthly payment formula we're going to use. Uh, P is the principal, how much of a loan you're going to take out. We want to make sure that, uh, obviously don't take out too much, but you have to make sure you cover whatever you need to be covered. So this could be the, how big your mortgage is, could be how much your car, uh, how much your car loan is going to be for. This is the principal amount, amount you're going to start with. R is the interest rate. Notice that I made sure it's a decimal. Do not put the percent in there. I'll show you how to do that. Very simple. Uh, N is the number of times you intend to pay per year. Normally this is always 12. Um, you want to pay monthly, so you want to make sure to put that 12 there later on. 1 is going to be uh, is going to compensate for the uh, P up here. Uh, R, same as up there for interest rate, and the same thing up here, and the same thing up here. So going to make sure, make sure it's the number of times. And lastly, the T is going to represent uh, the number of years that the loan is going to be for. All right. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by uh, looking at a real life problem, real life example, and then we're going to move from there. Is I want to look at a brand new 2013 Honda Pilot. Uh, right here, as you see on the screen, uh, its estimated price is around thirty-two thousand four hundred fifty-seven dollars. Uh, not my ideal card, definitely uh, what the wife wants, so I don't have much say here. But uh, um, after taxes, we'll say 7% in fees, um, we'll probably end up having to take out a loan of about $35,000. Okay, And then after uh, we get that $35,000, that will be our principal that we're going to use to plug in later on. Uh, the other thing, so we'll go over here and place that. We're going to put the P here. P will be how much we're taking out. Cost will be P equals $35,000. So the next thing we need to find out is uh, how much our interest rate is actually going to be. So we're going to pull up uh, one of the websites. Obviously, you can do some shopping around. But uh, we have Bank of America up here. If you'll notice right here, if we decide to buy a brand and we're getting a new one, um, 2 point. Uh, 2.14 percent, and notice here it is 60 months. So uh, divide that by 12, that'd be five years. Okay, so 2.14 uh, percent. That'll come up a little bit later on as we're doing all this information. Okay, so uh, R here will be 2.14 percent. Uh, the other two variables you need to look at are N. If you remember from before, N is going to represent the number of times we plan on paying this. Well, monthly payments, so that'll be 12 times. We should, hopefully. Uh, the T is going to represent the number of years. Well, if we have a 60-month, okay, our loan was over 60 months. Obviously, if you're doing like a 72-month loan, this will be a little bit different. But if it's 60, mo uh, 60 months divided by 12 months, we'll tell you how exactly how many years. So we know we have T equals five years for our formula. Okay. Now, before you just start just plugging stuff in, it's really important, you know, when you plug stuff in, you plug it in the right way. So the first thing we're going to plug in is the P. Okay. P, just like we said, $35,000, that's what we're going to plug in. So I'm going to put it right here, 35,000, zero, 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 multiplied by the R. Now, you can't use a percent inside of a math problem. You've got to change it to a decimal. Okay, really simple. You just take the decimal place right here, and you're going to move it over two spots to your left. Okay, and 
that, I mean, so instead of putting in point, uh, instead of putting in 2.14, you're going to put in point zero there. Good point there. Decimal place number two. Point zero two one four, and that is now going to be your percent. You changed it from a percent to a decimal, and we're going to divide it by our new n, and our n again from before number of times we plan on paying per year, which will be twelve. Okay, so that is the entire top. Okay, that's the top part of our formula. For the bottom, again, plug in the same exact thing. We have the one already there minus parentheses. 1 plus r. r is same thing, again, in decimal form. Could you put it in a fraction form? Absolutely, but this decimal is a little easier. Point zero two one four, and divide it all again by 12 again. Close parentheses as the formula says. Now raise this part of the parentheses to the negative exponent. Negative there, it's important. And again, it's 12, and the uh, t is going to be 5. Okay, all right, you have it all set up. Now it's important to go through and do the order of operations. Okay, so um, our PEMDAS is coming back into play. All right, so we're going to start off by using the order of operations, PEMDAS. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is the top only, okay? They're almost like two separate problems. First, we'll look at just the top part right here, just the top part of the top of here, okay? Um, First of all, do we have any parentheses? That's what the P is going to stand for. Any parentheses up top? Yes, we do. Yeah, we need to take care of what's inside of that first. So on your calculator, you're going to put in 0 0.0214 and divide that by 12. Okay, you're going to get a really, really long answer. It'll probably be point. I'm going to try to keep as many as you can because you don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to mess up the answer in the end, so try to keep as many decimal places as you can. So 0 0.00174. And it's going to be repeating after that. All right, and if you look before, we still have, remember we did that, we did the parentheses first. So we have 35,000, okay, multiplied by that. So if you have that still on your screen, hit the multiplication sign. And then multiply that by 35,000, okay? Which you will end up with on the top. We'll put it down here because we're doing some more simplification. Our top is now completely simplified. It is 62.416 repeating. We'll use that a little bit later on. Now we got to go take care of the bottom, okay? Same thing up here, okay? Parentheses. Do you have parentheses? Yes, we do. We got to go to the most innermost ones possible. So you actually notice you have the same exact operation here. You'll notice that this part right here comes first. This is parentheses, but it's also this sign right in the middle is division. Well, if you look over here on the right side of the screen, D division is coming before, you know, this addition sign here. So division first. So 0 0.0214 divided by 12, we actually just did it right there. So you can put that in there for now. So the bottom now becomes 1 minus 1 plus... And you can put that there, 0 0.001783, repeating, end parentheses. Still have our negative, and our M we said before was a 5, and the T, is, or sorry, the N is a, the N is number of times we put in that 12 months, and it's T5 there, okay? So parentheses are taken care of. we got to simplify this just a little bit more, okay? So we have simplified. The more parentheses, the innermost ones here. So we have 1 minus, now if you put in the calculator, 1 plus that, you know, one of the easier problems, 1.0017, 1 3 repeating. Okay, close parentheses, and you have negative 12 to the times 5, 12 times 5 over there for the exponents. All right, and close parentheses. Next step is what's next at the parentheses is exponents. We do have exponents, so let's take care of those, right? That's right here. Well, the only thing it's asking us to do is for us to multiply. So let's rewrite it again. 1 minus 1.001783, repeating, close, and 
It's negative 12 times 5, and negative times the positive stays negative, so it's going to be a negative 60 here. Okay, this is where your scientific calculator will get really handy here. All right? So we got to take care of the actual exponents themselves now, now that we've multiplied them out. Okay? So we have to take this entire thing right here, just this part, that underline in black, okay, and raise this to this power. So in your calculator, what I need you to press now, okay, I need you to press 1. Point zero zero one seven eight three 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 three. Keep going all the way to doesn't go anymore. Okay, you want to make sure you get enough there. All right. Now, after you put that in, I need you to press. You should find under, if you have a scientific calculator, it should have this little symbol here. Y to the x power. Okay. What you just put, what you just put in that one point zero zero one seven eight three. Repeating. That is the Y part, okay? So click this button one time, okay? And after you click it, now I need you to type in the exponent. Start with the number first. So you're going to put in 6 and then 0, and then go and find, normally on the new calculators, the bottom like right-hand corner normally is a negative sign. Yours might be a little bit different. We're going to make, make sure if it says negative 60. After you hit that, you're going to hit the equals, and what you should have, if you did it correctly, is this is now going to say, it's going to say 0.89861142, okay? That's what's left from the raising this entire thing here to its negative 60 power. That's what's left. Okay, and then the last thing is simplify that one minus that in the calculator one minus point eight nine eight six one one four eight two, and you'll get an answer of which I'm going to go put down here of point one zero one three eight eight five one eight. That's what I got on my calculator. Depending, yours might be off by just a little bit, a little bit different, but you'll see in the very end it's not going to matter too much. Okay. Obviously, if you get it exact, you can get the exact payment, which, you know, we want to make sure it's as close as possible. All right, and the last thing is that we did the top problem, we did the bottom prop, bottom of the problem. Now we're just going to simplify this, and it's 62.416 repeating. You put this calculator, top number divided by the bottom number, and you should finish up with a total answer of 600, okay, 615. Screen rings all the way down. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Now we have a total of 615.62. All right, so this is how much, if I were to go and buy that Honda Pilot right now, okay, and I took out a full $35,000 loan at 2.14 interest rate, okay, uh, and it's going to cost me $615.62, and that's just for the loan. So that's just for the car itself. <coughs> uh, obviously, no gas or anything involved. All right. So what does that mean to you? Okay. Well, the whole meaning behind this is if you want to find out how much extra you would pay versus you know paying cash that day, all you'd have to do is take that $615 and you just figure it out there. Okay. If you remember back, if you remember back in the problem up here you found out that you're going to pay every month for five years. So how many months is that? Okay, it's 60 months. So if I multiply that amount that I just found out about, okay, 615.62 and multiply it by 60, I would end up paying $36,937.20 total for that entire loan. So if you're willing to, you know, if I subtract the original cost of my loan, Okay, if I subtract the original cost, I'm only going to be paying, what is that, uh, $1,937.20. So if you think about $2,000 is okay to be spending, you know, just to borrow some money, then this is, you know, what you want to do here, okay? This can be applied in any given situation. It can be applied, you know, for a mortgage loan over 30 years. Obviously, the principal in most cases is going to be a lot higher. But, you know, this works for any big, large payment that you're going to be borrowing for.